Hey, baby. Hey, babe. How you doing? I didn't hear the chirp from the alarm go off when you came in. Gosh, you scared me. I'm sorry. You got a new hair, though. I like oh, it. Do you like it? Yeah, it's nice. Yes. Oh, baby, thank you. You're John, you have been gone for four days. Uh, I've I missed you. I know. And I'll miss you, too, baby. Come on, let's sit down. Let's have some us time. All right, let me see. About tonight. Why don't you call your brother up and see if he come out and hang out with us tonight? No, he's already going back home to St. Jose, honey. Ah, well, what about your niece and the kids? Tell them to come over for dinner. Let's have dinner with them. She's actually having dinner over her house, and she's inviting some folks over. Uh -huh. She asked if we stop by. Okay. Listen, John, not to change the subject or anything, mm -hmm. but I want you home more often. And what I really like is for us to get our date nights back, okay? All right. Okay? Yeah, baby. What? <laughs> I'm surprised you're not gonna put up a fuss? Nope, you deserve it, sweetie. Wow. Okay, baby. Listen, John. I'm not gonna put up an argument, okay? Mm -hmm. But you're gone for days at a time. And I don't know where you are or who you're with. And you know you have been unfaithful in the past. And you've told me time listen, and time again. Listen, baby, I know my track record isn't the best, but I'm trying, all right? You know what, tonight, I think I'm gonna go hang out with our uh, spawn. You know, Dwayne, and um... Oh, wait, 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 baby, wait. Okay, but I'm gonna go with you, okay? Let's just stop and get a bite to eat before we go with Dwayne's, okay, honey? <laughs> hey, girl, you're so anxious. <laughs> You can go out with me and my boy. Yes. All right? We can go get something to buy and something to eat before we go. Okay. All right? Okay. And I promise this is more date nights to come. Okay, All right? baby. All right. I love you. I love you, too. This is going to be a good year, baby. Okay, baby. All right? Sarah, you betrayed me, too. You were supposed to be my wife until death do us part. Till death, death. I, I'll kill both those men you've been messing with, both of them, and their families. One of them's a stinking cop, just like your dad. And never thought I was good enough for his precious little Sarah. Oh. Oh, I'm, I don't care anymore. I'm, I'm ready to die, and someone's going to pay. Someone's going to pay for this. <sighs> you kept me away from my daughter. The only thing I have to live for. Oh, and oh, and, and now someone's going to pay. Someone's going to pay. I'm going to kill somebody. I can do it because I'm the devil. I'm the devil. Someone's going to die. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take my Bible and my shotgun. I'm going to have my music, and I'm going to have some fun, and I'm going to go out and reap a harvest of blood. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Uplifting, and that was a dramatization from the book Covered and Kept by Karen R. Johnson, and her story is an amazing story, amazing story. We have her on the line with us. She's live from California, and we're going to be talking to Karen in just a moment. But again, I always like to recognize my wonderful assistant here, Laura. Laura, hey, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are I, you? I'm doing great. It's always good to work with you. And uh, 
We're going to be talking with Karen. Karen, how are you today? I'm good, Rhonda. Thank you. Good, good. Welcome to the show. Karen, your story is amazing. I read your book, Covered in Cap. It's an awesome book, very well written. And your story really, to me, plays like a movie. It's amazing. But, you know, I want to go, we did do a dramatization, but I want to go more into your, uh, um, your telling us your story and where you want to start. So let's, let's talk about you and John and how you guys met. Okay. You know, I moved to the Sacramento area in 1992, mm -hmm. and of course you'd have to read the book to find out why I found myself here in Sacramento. But anyway, I was a, uh, a single mom at the time and an entrepreneur, and I was teaching various aerobic classes around town, and one day John and I, our paths crossed. And our first meeting, it was it was interesting because he was in his news van. He was a cameraman at that time for Fox 40 News, and there was an event, and I parked behind his van, and he told me I couldn't park there, and I laughed at him. And from there, Rhonda, I ran into John four times, well, a total of four times, but three times after that. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, Lord, is this is this a divine appointment? Is this is this the man that you have for me. I was ready to settle down, and I was praying that the Lord would send me a husband. And uh, I was, I was uh, when I first met him. Though initially I was in a relationship, so I wasn't, I wasn't uh, interested per se. But after our cross kept, our paths kept crossing, mm -hmm. and my relationship had ended, I was trying to, to you know, to discern if it was God's will for us to be together. Okay. Okay. And so fast forwarding, you and John, you get married and do you have a perfect marriage? No, not at all. Okay. Uh, sometimes I wonder if there is a perfect marriage out there. Mm -hmm. We know that most marriages take a lot of work. And one of the biggest questions I had, Rhonda, was how do we become one? Okay. I used to hear that all the time. And our pastor, when we got married, preached a powerful sermon called Bone of My Bone, Flesh of My mm -hmm. Flesh, mm -hmm. which we find that in the book of Genesis when Adam and Eve come together in the garden. But um, I found it that it was a very, very difficult. We were a blended family. John brought two children into the family. I brought one. Okay. And we had two pre-teenagers and one who was a teenager. And so we had our struggles in that area, and then we had other struggles as well. Okay. Alrighty, and let me ask you this, with the children being a blended family, did everybody mesh together or was there any complications there as well? Well, there were complications. Our boys, John's son and my son, they were nine days apart, mm -hmm. same age, and they immediately bonded. They immediately got along. And of course, kids, they have their little confrontations from time to time, but mm -hmm. the boys were, were close. It was my stepdaughter who had a very difficult time. She was 14 when we met, and she was daddy's little girl. And just seeing daddy have another girl, which was not her, it was very difficult for her to embrace the fact that he was marrying and marrying me. So mm -hmm. that in itself brought a whole nother uh, dynamic to to the marriage. Okay. And helped her, her to understand the marriage covenant. Okay, so now let's go to that day that this uh, unfortunate event happened. What was that day like for you and John? Well, the day was supposed to begin with us going to church and having family time together. Mm -hmm. However, the night before, it was a terrible, terrible downpour. It rained like crazy. He called me and told me instead of coming home, he was going to go back to the station. He was going to stay there, sleep, and then he would be on his way, and he would make it home in time enough for us to go to church together. Okay. My day began, Rhonda, with my phone ringing and him on the other end saying, why didn't you wake me up? I, you know, and I was like, and I was in a deep sleep, and he should have been home by that time because it was 9 a.m. He overslept, I overslept, and so it didn't begin the way we had planned. And, and as a matter of fact, the part of the skit that we did is right after he gets home uh, when you just made lunch and you're waiting for him to get in, and I think you mentioned that you hadn't seen him for about four days at that time, right? 
That is correct, yes. Okay. Because he was also working on a documentary, mm -hmm. and he was in and out of town. The uh, doc documentary was dealing with a lot of fatherless children because his passion was the foster youth, and he was traveling around doing different uh, location shoots. So, no, I did not see him for four days. We would talk every day, okay. but I did not see him for four days. Okay. And so did everything feel the same to you when you saw John that day, or was there something that happened that made things feel a little bit different for you than most days? You know, it seemed like for the first time in our five and a half marriage, years of marriage, that the day, though, though it didn't start off the way we had hoped, it seemed like he was at home, and, but not just at home, but that everything was, was, was perfect. Even though I was upset with him in, on the inside, I believe the Holy Spirit was just telling me just to enjoy our time together. Okay. And so I did not want to say or do anything that would cause any type of friction between us. And so I just pretty much went with the flow. Okay. Okay, so you guys decide to go out to dinner, and you're at dinner, you just finished dinner, you're going to the car. What happens next? Well, one of the reasons why we left at the moment that we left is because John said we weren't going to have time to go see my mother. She had her birthday four days prior. Mm -hmm. I had already told her we would be coming, and it was our date night, but I did tell her that I would be coming by, and I did not want to disappoint her. So when he said we're not going to have time to see Mom, I rushed Things. I told the waitress to please bring our bill so that we could leave. Okay. Not knowing that a whole uh, a, a, a war was going on on the outside of that restaurant, and it had started it had started earlier in the day with uh, Aaron Dunn getting high on meth and deciding that he was going to go out and reap his blood of harvest. He was going to go out and kill people. So of course we didn't know that. Uh, we didn't know that it would be our last time together, but when we got on the outside of that door, Rhonda, it, um, man, it, 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 it just seemed like the world had stopped. Mm -hmm. It was a Saturday night. It was dark outside. It was cold, but it was utter silence. I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything. My husband pulled out his phone, jumped on his phone, and when he did that, I ran and jumped in the car because I had the keys. He asked me to drive, and though it was our date night, I didn't want to drive, but I knew he would be driving all morning long in his news van, and so I said, sure. Okay. And so I had the keys, and I was in the car. Okay. So you got so, in the car, and John's outside of the car, leaning against the car, talking to his friend who you guys were going to go visit that evening, I suppose, as well, right? Yes, we were going to visit him second, and then we were going to visit Mom last, and then from there we were going to go home, and he was going to get dressed and go on, off to work. Okay. So that was our plan. Uh, before we got to the restaurant, just before we got there, he said, Honey, this is going to be a great year. I, it was like, you know, exhaling. It was like, wow. It was music to my ears because we had our, our struggles, we had our challenges, and to hear my husband say, this is going to be a great year, mm -hmm. I just knew that we were going to be, uh, everything was going to be downhill. We had, uh, we had, uh, he had made some commitments to me that he was going to do better in our marriage and we were going to just um, really work hard on, on our marriage. And so I was just very hopeful. Okay. And so he's there and Aaron Dunn walks up and what happens? There's, I'm sitting in the car, not knowing what's going on. The car, car is turned on. I am waiting for him to get in the car. I hear his voice. He said, spoon. And then he said, man, get that out of my face. And then I heard a pow. Well, I, the, the pow sounded like it was in the distance. And his friend and him, they used to joke back and forth. And so I thought when he said spoon, Spoon made a, a, a joke, cracked a joke, and then John said, man, get that out of my face. Okay. And then, so I didn't think anything of it. I sat there. My, my head was in a forward position. I didn't look to the right. I didn't look to the left. I just sat there, and I just waited. Okay. After I didn't hear him at all, I finally looked to the right, and when I looked to the right, I didn't see him, nor did I hear him anymore. Hmm. 
I thought that it was a little odd, but I didn't, I didn't get alarmed because I thought maybe he went back to the restaurant. Maybe he had left something. And I sat there for a few seconds, and then I, when I didn't hear his voice, I turned to my left. And when I saw this man leaving from our location, walking away from the car, but he wasn't just walking away from the car. He had a 12-gauge shotgun. Wow. Okay. And when I saw that, I just put it all together. Man, get that out of my face, pal. And then the silence, I knew that John had been shot. Okay. So did you jump out of the car, or what did you do? Yes, the moment I put it all together, I opened up my car door. And when I opened up the car door, this man heard my, my door open. He robotically turned around, looked in my direction, and he just stood there as if he was scanning the parking lot. Well, not as if, but he was scanning the parking lot, mm -hmm. looking. And I ducked. And when I ducked, all I could do was cry out. And I was just saying, he's going to kill me. He's going to kill me. I can identify him. He can, he's going to kill me. And I was just cry crying and just shaking, you know. And when he didn't see me or hear me because I was ducking, but my eye was on him, he turned back around and he started walking away from the scene and now he's shooting up in the air and I can hear the gunshots going off round after round and I knew then it was my opportunity to get out of the car and I jumped out of the car, ran over to the passenger side and when I did, my husband was laying flat on his back. His face was disfigured. It was like hamburger meat on the ground, on the pavement. And all I could see was his juggler vein pumping. His eyes were closed. And uh, I knew that if I did not run and get help, that he would not make it. Okay. And unfortunately, was, we know that John did not make it. And Aaron Dunn went on to kill. He killed two people that night and wounded seven other people as he went on this shooting spree across Sacramento. I understand he had a satanic Bible in his car, blasting his music and having his shotgun and just shooting randomly and crazy, just acting crazy and uh, shooting at anyone that he could. And his deal was to take whomever out he could that night, correct? Yes, he, mm -hmm. he, he also, well, yes, he, he wanted to kill police, the police officers. And that's, you know, he started shooting and he shoot at, shot at the police officers. Um, but any, anybody, anybody that got in his path, he was going to shoot them, yes anybody in his path but he also wanted to die that night mm -hmm. um we believe that he wanted to die by cop he wanted the cops to shoot him and kill him and they did they shot him five times he flatlined he went down but the ambulance revived him mm -hmm. and two operations later he lived okay and we're we're, we're going to be wrapping up a little bit here but uh, Karen, you went on to write your book, and uh, I just want to touch bases really quickly because I don't have a lot of time left, and uh, Laura may have one question for you, I'm not sure, but uh, I wanted to get to the point, too, that uh, not only did you deal with your husband being murdered and you're sitting in the car and not even known that he, knowing that he was shot in the face, uh, you also went through an issue with the... Uh, funeral arrangements, if I understand correctly. And if you can tell us oh, that real briefly. Man, yes, I did, Rhonda. It was, I, it was so surreal. I thought I was actually watching a soap opera. I thought I was watching a movie because of all of the things that happened after. Mm -hmm. I was there, present physically, but mentally and emotionally, I had checked out. And the only time I would come would, would be when things had to get done, when things had to, had to happen. And on the third day, after the arrangements had been made, I received some shocking, shocking news that just ripped right through my heart. And I, 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 just, didn't, I just didn't understand it. I didn't understand it from the beginning. Um, but when I could not get my husband's body from the coroner, from the morgue, to the funeral home, because I found out that my husband was married to another woman. Wow, wow. So your husband, John, is still married. You're married to this man. You're trying to get uh, arrangements made for the funeral, and you find out that he is still legally married to someone else, on top yeah. of all that you've been through. You know, Karen, your story is so amazing. Um, 
I just want to uh, have Laura give us a comment on what she's been hearing, uh, you know, whatever you want to say about it, Laura. And uh, we're going to um, be wrapping up with you, Karen, but I do want to tell people, please get this book. It's an amazing story, testimony of a very strong woman who overcame a lot in her uh, you're, you're so young. I don't know how old you are, but you're so young to go through everything that you went through. But uh, she's overcame a lot. The book, again, is covered and capped. Awesome book. We're going to be... What, what would you like to say right now? Any questions for Karen or any comments about anything that you've heard? Well, clearly, Karen is a very strong woman. She was mm -hmm. able to take what happened to her and um, move forward with it. But, mm -hmm. again, we hear a story and... We talk about dissociation, just like we talked about with um, Susan, that what happens is the survival instinct takes over and we, and we manage our yes. adrenaline flows. We handle what we need to handle, no matter what it is, that the human spirit is still so strong that we survive. That's true. That's true. And thank God for that. And uh, Karen... Um like I said, you have an amazing story. What is the uh, website that I know John started a website because, I mean, not a website, but he started, started an organization uh, to help kids get adopted because he had such a bad childhood and that was his passion. And I know you continue to do that work that he started. What is that website? That particular website is www.jjassist one that's o n e dot org so it's a s s i s t o n e dot org mm -hmm. and uh that's the passion that he had and he had a lot of hope for these you know, the children lives that he wanted to touch mm -hmm. and he had a lot of hope for the nonprofit and he just had a lot of hope that uh he would be able to make a difference in the world and 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 be able to change person john uh had a, a terrible upbringing, and um, he, he, he had a beautiful heart. He loved people. He loved children. And I just know that we were caught up in this great controversy between good and evil, between Christ and Satan, uh -huh. between uh, light and darkness. And we were able to, I was able to see all of this lived out in my life and live in color. And as I said, I, you would have thought it was a movie, I would have thought it was a movie and that I was on the outside watching someone else, someone else's life. But I was okay. actually living all of this stuff that right. was happening. But okay. I want people to root Jesus okay. by hey, God's robe of righteousness. That's what covered me on that evening. I believe that. And, right. um, and I believe that it was his, his Holy Spirit that inspired me to write the book. So Wonderful. I just really want people to get and understand and, and by happen, happenstance, but by um, God's divine providence. And I know he was working in my life to pull me through all of the stuff that I had to go through. Wonderful, Karen, and thank you so much for doing the interview with us. We're going to do your trailer now, and uh, I will be talking to you soon, and thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you both. Uh, Sister Laura, was that, was, am I correct? Yes. Yes, thank you, Laura, and, and again, uh, Ron, it's always a pleasure, and it's always uh, just a blessing, so I want to say thank you, and thank you to your show. Thank you, too. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Introducing the stirring and emotional new Zulon Press book, Covered and Kept, by author Karen R. Johnson.
Covered and Kept, is available at Christian bookstores and online. Well, as you see, we've been talking to Karen R. Johnson, amazing story. You need to go out and get that book. And also check out John Johnson's website. He's doing great things, even though his life was taken away at an early age. He's still doing great things through his organization. And uh, for those out there listening, listen, if you are interested in auditioning to be a part of our show, you got to see a dramatization for part of our Helps Ensemble. Those are our performers that we use per show. If you're interested in auditioning, please call our office. We'll be glad to audition you. You must have for actors. We're looking for vocalists, dancers, uh, musicians, anyone in that field. And uh, certainly if you call the office, we can set up a time to audition you. Also, those out there who would like to sponsor our show to help us to bring the show to, pa to pass each week, uh, please call the office in regards to sponsorship. This show is definitely designed to give a voice to survivors, but it's also designed to help educate our community on staying safe and some of the things you can do. And for those out there hurting, you know, I have my, my co-host, I call her, Laura, on the show with me to help you guys uh, be able to heal inwardly because a lot of times people don't get help when they've been through a crime. So that's the reason that we have an expert panelist here to help you on that as well. We've got a concert, I'm sorry, we got a conference coming up and that is the Impact and Influence Authors Conference. It's going to be this August 17th through the 19th. It's a weekend event, awesome event. Authors from all over the country will be coming out, sharing their books with you. It's open to the public. Interested in that, please give us a call. We also will be doing an author's award for our Author of the Year 2012 Impact and Influence Author of the Year. This is actually the first place award, and there will be a first place, second place, and third place. So to those authors out there who would like to get recognized for your work, please give us a call, and we'd love to have you come out and be a part of that event as well. Okay, and then if you are a survivor out there and you have a story that you want to tell because you know your story is going to bless someone, give us a call, 770-281-8990, 770-281-8990 is the number to show as well. I thank Laura so much for always joining me and thank everybody for viewing and tuning into our show. This is Rhonda Knight, your host, and we will see you on the next show. Good night. Save your soul.